The use of air and water to create artificial cooling dates back thousands of years. Yet the first vapor compression refrigeration system was built in 1834 using ethyl ether as the refrigerant. Why not air or water? Because they have low thermodynamic efficiency. Ethyl ether was followed by methyl chloride, which together with other natural refrigerants, such as CO2, were the most used at the end of the 19th century. CO2 emissions due to refrigeration and air conditioning are estimated to account for around 7 to 10% of global CO2 emissions. This means three times more than aviation and shipping combined. Using CO2 as a refrigerant means avoiding emission of synthetic refrigerants, which contribute much more to the greenhouse effect. Additionally, CO2 is often as a byproduct of industrial processes that would otherwise be emitted into the atmosphere. For this reason, it can be said that the use of CO2 does not contribute to climate change. The greenhouse effect of CO2 as a refrigerant is just 0.025% of that of R404A. The objective of the Kigali Amendment to the Montreal Protocol is to phase down refrigerants with IGWP. The goal is to achieve a reduction in HFC consumption of over 80% by 2047, which will help avoid an increase in global temperatures of up to 0.5 Celsius degrees by the end of the century. Besides, the Montreal Protocol has been defined as the most successful international agreement in history. Do you know who Gustav Lorentzen was? He was a Norwegian thermodynamic scientist who developed the modern transcritical thermodynamic cycle in the late 1980s. He also promoted the use of CO2 as a refrigerant as an alternative to ozone depleting refrigerants. Unfortunately, he died in 1995 and was not able to see the success and evolution that CO2 is now having. However, experts in natural refrigerants now meet every two years at a conference named after him. Did you know that just two years ago, the price of CO2 as a refrigerant in Europe was 20 times lower than the price of R14A? If we take for example a water chiller with a refrigerant charge of 50 kg, the cost of the refrigerant varies from 150 euros using CO2 to more than 1000 euros using R14A. Refrigerant prices depend on many factors. However, it is very likely that over the next few years, the price of CO2 will remain much lower than that of synthetic refrigerants. Several years ago, CO2 was not able to be used in warmer climates due to low efficiency in traditional cycles. Now, there are more than 30,000 CO2 installations globally and the number continues to grow. This is also thanks to new technologies, such as ejectors, which do some of the work usually done by the compressor, yet without consuming power. The result is an increase in performance of up to 25%. These devices simply exploit a phenomenon that was discovered at the end of the 18th century by an Italian physicist, Giovanni Battista Venturi. He realized that the pressure and velocity of fluids are related. <laughs>